What's up, Raider Nation? We are back, and today we're going to talk about the draft. We're nine days away from the 2020 NFL Draft, and the Raiders are picking at 12 and 19. Now, do you think the Raiders are going to stay there? And that's the first question that I'm going to ask, and I'm going to approach this as the Raiders would stay put at 12 and 19. I think it's a good place to stay, but at the same time, we need to get into the second round. We have no picks in the second round. We've got three picks in the third round. And speaking of three, check out this fly tee. That's brought on by my boy, Johnny, over at One Nation Fanware. That's right. That's One Nation Fanware. This is the uh, the flex on them tee. You see the three rings, Super Bowl eleven, Super Bowl fifteen, and Super Bowl eighteen, And, of course, you know, Super Bowl fifteen is my personal favorite for personal reasons. Uh, but, yeah, let's get into this. With the Raiders having the 12th and 19th pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, we look at what are the team needs. The Raiders are looking to add some talent. Obviously, the Raiders need a number one wide receiver. They need a cornerback opposite of Trayvon Mullen. We need a little more depth at linebacker. We need some more safety help, even though we brought in Demarius Randall and Jeff Heath. I think that you build that depth. You start looking at ways that you can build the team. Immediate needs, though, let's look at these top two. I hope to see the Raiders go wide receiver and corner in the first two picks of the draft. Now, with those picks, you have a couple different ways you can go, and I'm going to go with a couple different options. At 12, you can either go Jerry Judy, you can go Henry Ruggs, or you can go my personal favorite, Mr. C.D. Lamb out of Oklahoma. Now, I think that either way you go, you're not going to go wrong. But I think that the way that we look at it is what is the best fit for this team. And if you look at the best fit for this team and the best fit offensively, I would say Jerry Judy or C.D. Lamb is going to be that guy. Now, obviously, John Gruden has said that he wants his own personal Tyreek Hill, which Henry Ruggs would be. I just see the more versatility out of Judy or Lamb. Me personally, I'm a bigger fan of Lamb, and that's just because of the OU roots. I think that Judy is a hell of a player, and I would love to have him on the team. At the end of the day, any of those guys would be great. Now, let's look at 19. Let's look at what the cornerback position would look like. You've got some great players there. You've got Jeff Gladney. You've got Jalen Johnson. You've got A.J. Terrell. Now, those are all guys that I would love to add to this team. I think that they all bring in a unique ability to that defense would play great opposite of Trayvon Mullen. I think that you have to, you've got Trayvon at your number one. You add a guy like Gladney, Johnson, or Terrell at number two, and you've got a solid cornerback set. We still are going to need to talk about depth, and I'm going to get into that in a little bit because I'm going to get into some depth pieces and some key free agents that I would like to bring back that would be beneficial for the depth. But let's look at what we're looking at in the draft right now. And I'm only going to get into the first round here because obviously we've got nine days. I've got some time to talk to you guys and we have nothing to do. And I had somebody tell me, well, if you have nothing to do, talk more. Well, I'd like to do it in another video. But let's look at it. So pick 12, we've got Judy, Lamb, or Ruggs. Me personally, Lamb. Pick 19 would be Gladney, Johnson, or Terrell. Me personally, my pick, I would like to go A.J. Terrell, keep it Clemson, have Trayvon Mullen, have A.J. Terrell. We've seen that we've gotten a lot of production out of the Clemson guys that we had. Uh, you know, Trayvon Mullen has played exceptionally well last year. Hunter Renfro blew up the spot. And Cleveland Farrell started to come into his own at the end of the year. You see his off-season training techniques and what he's doing. He said that he's going to come back a different player. And you can see that he is putting in the work. Seeing these Clemson guys and the work that they put in and what they can provide to this team, I'm all for bringing another guy in. Now, let's talk about some free agency depth. Because obviously we've got some guys. And we've, we've brought in some great players. We brought in Nick Wachowski. We brought in Corey Littleton. We've brought in Nelson Aguilar. We've brought in... Jeff Heath, we brought in Jason Witten. We've brought in some talent, we brought in some depth, but what we need to do is we need to focus on more depth. A couple guys that I'm looking at is depth players, players that have already been on this team that I would like to bring back are guys like Will Compton, 
guys like Daryl Worley and a guy like Deion Jordan. And these are the reason why I picked these three players. I think Will Compton brings the veteran leadership to this team. When he came in and he started the final three games, the defense got better. And the defense got better, one, because of his leadership, two, because of his knowledge. He was able to be out there and to lead this defense. They didn't have anybody out there for a while. They were trying to piece things together. I know that Tahir was the leader, uh, but he was playing out of position. And with, with Tahir playing out of position, it put him further out of position in a lot of situations, which didn't really benefit the defense. I think that, you know, when Will came in, he led the team in tackles. He was disruptive. He was great on special teams. He's a guy that I would love to have back on this team because of the reasons that I just stated. I think that, you know, his veteran leadership, his ability to step in when needed. Uh, he's a guy that can make those tackles. He's a guy that's decent in coverage. He's good on special teams. He's a versatile player that we could use. Another guy that I would like to bring back is Daryl Worley. Now, Worley played pretty well at corner last year, and he was more of a hybrid player. He played safety, he played corner, he played a little bit of nickel, and he was a guy that Paul Gunther was able to use in a multitude of fashions because of his size, his speed, and his athletic ability. I think that bringing in a guy like Daryl Worley is going to continue to be a good mentor for the younger guys. But I also think that he's a great depth player that's going to give us the ability to continue to have success on the, in the defensive backfield. I think that the defensive backfield is one of the areas of deficiencies that we had. And it was because we didn't have a lot of depth, but we also didn't have a lot of speed. I think a lot of players were playing out of position. And I think that, you know, the loss of Jonathan Abram really hurt us. I think that the inconsistency that we had at corner and safety definitely hurt us but also some of the inconsistencies that we had at linebacker hurt us. And that's where you see guys like Littleton, Kwiatkowski, Morrow, Markel Lee, bring in a guy like Compton. I think that those are some features that we can look at. But now looking at that defensive backfield, bringing a guy like Worley back who knows the defense, who has had some success, I think that he would be a good fit again with this defense. And especially if we're drafting a guy like A.J. Terrell in the first round. And lastly... Dion freaking Jordan. This guy came in when we brought him in from Seattle and blew up the spot. He was in on plays. He was moving around. He was disruptive. He was fast. He was physical. He was playing with a vengeance. He was a guy that you could see was trying to make the best of the opportunity that was given to him. Coming off suspension and coming out of a situation of uncertainty, Dion Jordan took that opportunity and he made the best out of it. He played out of position a lot of times. They put him at defensive tackle. They put him at end. They moved him around, but he was disruptive in everywhere that he went. I'd love to see a little bit more of Deion Jordan. He brings a lot to the table, and I think that bringing him back gives us more depth in that position. You've got Cleveland Farrell. You've got Carl Nassib. You've got Arden Key. You've got Mad Max. You know, we have some depth at defensive end, but we need more. We need to continue to rush the passer. We need to continue to get to the quarterback. We need to get better on defense. And the only way you get better on defense is by bringing in talent. You bring in talent to compete. Deion Jordan versus Arden Key. I would love to see that matchup. I want to see these guys compete and see who's going to be the best fit for that position. If it's Arden, great, because I've been so high on Arden, I want to see Arden succeed. But if it's Deion, wonderful, because I think that Deion can bring that added dimension to this defense. His size, his speed, his physicality, the way that he attacks the ball, the way that he plays is exactly what we need on this defense. And adding him with a Malik Collins, with a Mo Hurst, with a Mad Max Crosby, with a Cleveland Farrell, these guys are guys that are going to get after the ball, that are going to make this defense better, and they're going to continue to help this team grow. And this is what I want to see. We talk about the defense and how the defense needs to step up and how we want the defense to do better. And we talk about the offense and how we need to get better in the red zone and how Derek Carr needs to extend plays and how we want to see Carr use his feet more and improvise and, and throw up more 50-50 balls. The only way that we can do this as a team is if the team is better. If we have a team that is confident in each other, a team that is confident in themselves, and a team that is confident in their coaching, and I think that one of the things that builds that is continuity. If you've got a team that has continuity, if you're bringing back key free agents that were on this team last year that had a little bit of success, 
they're going to bring that over to the next year because they got another opportunity. If you're bringing in rookies that have had success in college and that have, have great leadership skills, you're going to see that on the field. You're going to see Derek Carr teaming up with his, with his number one wide receiver. You're going to see Derek Carr teaming up with Tyrell Williams, with Zay Jones, with Nelson Aguilar, with Hunter Renfro. You're going to see these relationships get built. And that's how you get a competitive advantage. Thanks for listening to Raider Nation. Thanks for coming by, checking out the channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that like button. If you like what you're seeing and you want to see, make sure you, you're up to date on everything. Hit that alert button. Raider Nation, check out my other videos right here. I would love to get your feedback. Please make sure you leave the comments, share it, subscribe. Thank you, Raider Nation. And remember, nine more days to the draft. I'm going to be dropping some more videos coming up.